Now, of course, Kyle, we got to get off with our top five. This is everything you need to know that happened last week in the space, starting off with number one, Franklin Templeton. If you haven't heard of Franklin Temple, they are a trillion dollar, $1.5 trillion in assets under management. That makes them a ginormous financial institution. And they have created something extremely innovative that us over here at the Securities and Advisors team, we've actually only been ruminating about this. And now we've seen a financial institution bring to market a mutual fund completely built on the blockchain Amazing. to improve record ownership, efficiencies and distributions. It's a, a, the whole shebang here. It's an amazing 24 seven, 365 day trading product, all without any humans handling all of this paperwork. Shout out to Franklin Templeton, another huge, huge institution getting involved in the blockchain space, understanding the value of tokenization for real assets. And moving into number two, we have some U.S. regulatory updates. And there was some drama in, in, yeah. in most of the, the branches of governance. First, we start off with, with Senator Elizabeth Warren. She certainly has been highlighted multiple times over the last week or so, getting dunked on from social media. And now, unfortunately, she came out against the DeFi, saying specifically that it's too risky. She targets that it's it's the riskiest, the most dangerous, as she calls it, part of the cryptocurrency industry where you could potentially be doing business with a terrorist, in her specific words. Um, and so she also argues that stable coins will fail alongside DeFi because of the fact that they are leveraged or, or they're not fully backed one-to-one -to, -one yeah, to the U.S. dollar. She cited that DeFi was the most dangerous part of crypto. It's but ridiculous. we actually saw on the other side of the table with the regulators, not the legislators, over at the SEC, Gary Gensler released his agenda amongst many things, you know, improving capital markets. Not so much, according to one of our favorite crypto mom SEC commissioners, Hester Pierce, as well as Elad Rossman. So that's two SEC commissioners, both the Republican SEC commissioners, but nonetheless vocalizing that they are not a fan of where Gen Gary Gensler, who is the SEC chair, where his focus is in the upcoming year. It includes things like an expanded accredited investor definition, as well as potentially going after the Reg D exemption and seeing if there are more investor protect protections, he claims, that might be able to be added. Yeah, she said, quote, the agenda put forth by Chairman Gary Gensler through its silence on crypto signals the market can expect continued questions around the applications of securities laws end quote. So she is recognizing that the silence is deafening and something needs to happen soon. Moving on to number three, Bank of America, another major banking institution, has gone out and said that Avalanche is actually a viable option to Ethereum. Both from a scaling perspective, they cited that there's 4,500 transactions per, spec uh, per second, which is of course enough throughput. And of course, they've seen immense success in DeFi. Since August alone, the total locked in value on the Avalanche ecosystem is now six over six thousand uh, percent in increase since August I think that's crazy Kyle some basic stats for you as you mentioned her right 11.2 billion US dollars in staked assets on the Avalanche protocol it's a lot of money in assets and as you said it's grown tremendously just the last couple of months for perspective ethereum's at about 145 billion so about 13 times larger there. And then the market cap for AVAX is 17 times smaller than what we see from Ethereum. So you can kind of make that comparison how you will. It's now the 12th highest cryptocurrency by market cap. And moving into number four, we have Securitize. Securitize launched two new S&P Dow Jones index funds that are fully tokenized. The first one is the S&P Crypto Large Cap, which essentially is an auto rebalancing portfolio of the top 30 or so cryptocurrencies based on performance. And that rebalances it's up like 300% this year alone. They also are launching a tokenized fund backed by the S&P Kensho New Economies Composite Index Fund, which is one that tracks a little bit more broader in terms of fintech, artificial intelligence, VR, nanotechnologies, a lot of that kind of stuff, and bundles all that together. And I think it's seen about a 30 or 40% return, you know, year over year oh, or over the last couple of years. So things are going really well there. They're working with Anchorage as well as Copper and Interactive Brokers to launch these products and have the full blessing of the S&P and Dow Jones. I think their head of innovation was quoted in the press release citing this opportunity for tokenized fund products. Very impressive. It's supposedly the first uh, fund to be based on indices to be tokenized. So 
for great accomplishment there, Securitize. Moving on to number five, last but not least, we've got KKR, massive, massive private equity firm, making its first ever investment into a crypto firm, leading the round of none other than Anchorage, who we just mentioned as one of the partners in the Securitize Fund. So Anchorage, previously uh, being known for the first crypto company to receive a, an actual national bank charter from the OCC, they previously raised $80 million, and now a $350 million Series D is going to help them expand a heck of a lot further and continue to improve their infrastructure. I think that's absolutely incredible, Kyle. It pushes their valuation to over $3 billion and yet another major unicorn on its path to DECA unicorn status.